as you all know he is sparing his second lecture he is giving uh, delivering second lecture first lecture he has delivered on crispr cas9 system our view on crispr crispr cas9 and so many faculties attended that enjoyed that and requested for that to take uh, another lecture similar lecture as you all know he is heading the uh, synthetic biology group at ibab institute bangalore before joining there as a faculty he has also uh, worked as a postdoc fellow in different top institutions like oxford and uh, uh, mcgill institute uh, and cambridge universities so he is very expert person uh, you can you can interact with him that's why live lecture uh, i can take his individual video and then upload but that will not benefit you you can ask question you can uh, debate with him argue with him that is way to improve just don't join only for taking uh, certificate or just only joining and going by closing your uh, all ear phones just showing and that so that trend i want to change that's why when you will attend complete lecture and feel the feedback then in future we will send you a certificate e certificate also but that certificate have very less value uh, only your knowledge has value uh, so try to focus on learning you can interact and he is very friendly uh, he will not wait till last slide you can ask question any time you can unmute and ask so those who are interested in this topic they may get more benefit that is benefit of the live lecture otherwise video you can find video lectures of different expert people from different domain but in live lecture you can interact you can get uh, opportunity to ask question debate with him so welcome sir sanjay sir for for sparing your time giving your time because your motto is also to improve and to increase uh, our all knowledge pool of our society so that we will be able to transform society from certificate seeker to the knowledge seeker so we all are taking pain we are preparing slides uh, this uh, slides for you people uh, like teacher resource person i am also preparing this uh, you can say flyer uh, we take help from other people so we have created this uh, initiated you can say this science dialogue series under this umbrella several expert people come and they share their knowledge for the benefit of society and nation so you should take the maximum optimum advantage of this these things that is the purpose so sir now floor is for your son dash yours okay thank you very much sir for this opportunity and as you said i mean uh, we are all uh, on the same wavelength we want to disseminate knowledge to the next generation and also to interact so i will also ask everyone if you have any question you can either raise your hand or interrupt me and i will be happy to answer questions while i am presenting so i'll start with my sharing the slides and then uh maybe for the sake of wavelength i may switch off my camera okay okay uh just a second just one second okay now let me share right so everyone can see the slide correct yes now it's visible okay fantastic okay welcome everyone uh, to this uh, live interaction uh, so uh, today i will be talking about uh, the synthetic biology you might have heard the term uh, and i will try to give you a flavor of what synthetic biology means and uh, why it is an upcoming area of research and that the the future uh, work commercialization using biology synthetic biology will play an important role in the biotechnology in the uh, in every country in the globe so let's first see what do we understand 
by the word synthetic biology. It consists of two words, right? One is synthetic and biology we all know. So synthetic biology has uh, broadly defined as when we design or construct either new biological parts, and I will come to that what I mean by parts, devices, and system. But when we do something new using biological genes and genetic elements, or if there is a uh, biological system already existing and we redesign it for, hum uh, for human purposes, that means it should be useful for human purposes. And that is one uh, difference between synthetic biology, which includes so-called genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology. So those are the tools to generate a cell or a system which will make or produce something which is of value to humans, right? So this is what synthetic biology mostly uh, means. The, the other thing that we have to keep in mind is uh, that it is basically based on engineering principle, right? It means it's a marriage of biology and engineering. So uh, the engineering principles, we all know how to make a device, how to take a different parts and make an engine and so on, which I'll come in the next slide. So similarly, question is, can we do that for biology? biological principles. So biology, we have the DNA sequences, promoter, terminator, genes, and so on. Can we use those parts to construct something new in a cell or at an organism level, which will give some benefit to the society? So that means that will also mean that this new cell or a new synthetic cell or organism will have function that normally, naturally, it does not have. So that means if I do a genetic engineering, if I can modify a E. coli to make insulin, that is in uh, that is included in the synthetic biology field. But the way to do that is by genetic engineering or genetic modification, right? So that is one of the things that I want to highlight. So this is what is synthetic biology. So it's a broad definition. It's a very big field. And it involves many different branches of biology and engineering and technology. So this is uh, something to just make things very simple. We know that in engineering uh, domain, there are parts, for example, nuts and bolts and screws. Then using them, they make a device. And the device can be an engine, right? A, a kind of a petrol engine or a diesel engine, right? And this entire device is put into a chassis that means this the, the outer skeleton of a car right and this is the heart of that car the device which basically takes us from point a to point b in terms of transport so that means there are three broad areas in engineering principles one is part the smallest one we using part you make a device and then this device does a function and that is the system same way in synthetic biology, we can also have, let's say, proteins, DNA sequences, the RNA molecule. These can be the parts. Using them, we can also make circuits, small genetic biological circuits. And so that one gene product will trigger another gene product and there can be a cascade or interaction. So that is what we call as a device. And this entire device, which we construct by recombinant DNA technology, that entire plasmid or any other uh, system, I mean, device can be put within a cell, right? And then we can put it in a cell and provide input, such as, in this case, sugar or any kind of uh, abiotic factors, and hoping that, that this device that we have put in will give an output which is desired. It can be medicine, it can be biosensor, and so on. So that means here we are engineering the cell with something which we already have in nature, but this cell normally doesn't naturally have that system. And that is what is synthetic biology and the end game. So what is the workflow, right? So that means first we have to know what we want to design, what, we, what product we want to make using which organism. This we have to know. And all of this happens in the computer or in the lab, right? I mean, before you enter the lab to do experiment, this all has to be done. 
So first is target selection. That means is there a library exist? Is there already a knowledge? That means a plant makes a given metabolite. Is the biosynthetic pathway genes identified, regulatory things known? So this knowledge is needed. And based on that, we choose a target. Once we have decided what we want to do, then we can design a gene. And nowadays you can synthesize gene chemically. So you can order to a company, they will synthesize the gene provided you give the sequence. So one can actually make the genes which encode this. Let's say. Uh, any questions? Uh, okay. Nidhi Patel. Yes, Nidhi. No question. By mistake, she has, I think. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. So, uh, in principle, we can design such genes, and those genes may not naturally exist. We can even modify those genes, as you know, by a process called codon optimization. That means those gene sequences do not naturally exist. It's just that by doing codon optimization, we can increase the translation rate of those genes, right? We can put some artificial restriction sites. Uh, so, again, this is synthetic. This is not naturally present in that gene, maybe. And we are doing this at the design stage. Then all these genes that we have designed and we have manufactured and synthesized, we put it in a plasmid or some kind of vector that you already know using recombinant DNA technologies. So if we know for expression of a gene, we need these genetic elements, promoter, ribosome binding site, terminator. We need a marker to know, uh, to select which cells have got my plasmid and so on. So this is what is done. That means how many promoters we want to test, how many terminators, which gene, which marker, this we have to make sure while we are designing the vector, right? And then we come to a pathway. I want to make, let's say, uh, carotene in E. coli, which normally E. coli doesn't make. So that means there are many steps in making carotene. All are uh, uh, catalyzed by enzymes. Enzymes means proteins. Proteins means genes. So I have to, that means, clone multiple genes. And these multiple genes will give rise to a pathway. And now this pathway can be either natural, as I said, carotene from carrots or yeast, or it can be completely engineered. That function doesn't exist in nature, but based on the knowledge, we can make a new pathway to make a new metabolite in a cell which normally doesn't make it. Right? So this is how a pathway assembly is done. And then we have to find a suitable host based on the promoter, right? Because for uh, expression uh, in E. coli, we need E. coli promoters. For yeast, it has its own promoter. Mammalian has its own promoter and so on. So based on what we have chosen till now, we choose the host cell. It can be bacteria, yeast, algae, uh, this algae and fungi. And then we transform that. So this is where we put in a chassis organism. And this organism is now been scaled up in fermenters, in bioreactors to make a desired product, which can be a drug molecule, it can be biofuel, it can be any kind of recombinant enzyme used for enzyme replacement therapy, etc. So just you already probably know that most of the insulin in, that we use here is made in yeast. It is not for animal uh, resource anymore, right? It's not sourced from animals anymore. So there are a lot of products, as I will show you some examples, which now is completely made synthetically. Now, when I use the word synthetically, it doesn't mean chemical synthesis. What I'm saying is biosynthesis. That means we are using in a biological system, in a cell, and inside the chemical reactions are happening or chemical products are made. So it is different from by chemical synthesis. Chemical synthesis will have side products and byproducts which are harmful to the environment. Biological uh, bioproduction is almost green technology. So it is good for environment as well. And that's why synthetic biology has a huge role to play in the future economy. Now, how does this workflow work? So as I said, the idea is that we put some input, maybe some uh, glucose, sugars and something. We have engineered a circuit inside a cell and we get a desired output, whatever drug, etc. So the first step is design. Then we go for building that uh, entire pathway uh, in a lab. And then we test that in a cell, in an appropriate cell. And maybe it will fail because that cell has never made that chemical or that protein. Maybe that cell doesn't like or the pathway is not optimized. So we may not get what we want. And this is a very crucial step that we learn. We don't give up. Basically, we try to then improve the gene and the pathway and the metabolism of the cell 
so that we go back to the design stage, we build again, we test again, and so it is an iterative process. It goes on in this circle till we get the amount of chemical or the product that we need for commercial production. Right? So this is very important to know that this is an iterative process. Learning is very important and for that we need to do the other steps properly. So what are the key technologies and resources that are present as of now? So this is so, so this is called DBTL, design, build, test, learn. And this goes on in a circle, right? So the first one is design. This is done in a lab, uh, on a computer, most likely. What kind of knowledge is available? What kind of resources I can buy from somewhere? Or I need a bioinformatician or someone to design these kind of nucleic acid. That is the first step. Then we come to the wet lab, so to say. We work in a lab where we clone these kind of fragments into different vectors. We cut and paste. We use CRISPR technology or many other tools and technologies which will allow us to clone maybe hundreds of fragments together, right? A completely new gene which doesn't exist. And there are different technologies now in the market that we can use. Once we have built it by cloning, etc., we have to put it in a cell. And after we have put in a cell, we have to analyze, is this cell making the desired product? For that, there is NGS based measurements. So this is analytical part, cell-free systems. Uh, we have to know whether this product is made and how much of it is made, right? And then we learn from it. And here comes computational work, right? So machine learning comes, design rules. Maybe there is a, uh, what is done is that we try different permutation combination of the promoter terminator. Now, which one works better? So we learn from this. We also try to reduce the genome, etc. And also, it also helps in knowing being the reproducibility. So all of these tools and technologies, they go and at different steps. And you can see uh, that that means you need some computational people, we need some wet lab people, we need some analytical side of the uh, story, and we also need to have finally computational people who can analyze and learn from it. Now, you all know this, I'll just quickly go through that. What are the genetic parts, right? I mean, I initially said there are parts, devices, systems. So the parts are nothing but we know the gene. If, if we understand the uh, in a prokaryote, we need promoters to express any gene. We need ribosome binding site for translation. Uh, and we need the coding region. And to terminate transcription, we need this terminator sequences, right? So these are in prokaryotes, we well understand. In eukaryotes, of course, we have introns. But in, intro, uh, in addition to that, what are important for synthetic biology is that these insulators and enhancers, these are extra genetic elements which control gene expression. And this is what is a kind of a uh, cartoon to show that. Not only just the promoter, upstream of the promoter, there are many genetic elements which control and decide how much of the gene is going to be transcribed and translated. And the knowledge of that is important. So core promoter is something we all know, uh, but promoter uh, which are present distally or proximally, this information is needed to make a synthetic genetic circuit. Now, uh, the, uh, there are different kinds of promoters, right? So one is called constitutive which we all know that it is expressed in all tissue irrespective of any other factor. Inducible, that these promoters are normally off or on and their state can be changed just by adding something, either a chemical or by heat or some other kind of physical uh, parameter. Then there are tissue specific promoters. In a multicellular organism, some genes are expressed in some tissues and those genes are called tissue specific. That means those genes Promoters don't fire in every cell type, right? Constitutive promoters, these will fire every cell type. These can be induced and these only will be present in some tissues. And then there is this other class, synthetic promoters, which uh, we are working and many people are working. That means, can we make a new non-natural engineered uh, sequence promoter which doesn't exist? So that means, can I make a promoter for yeast which none of the yeast promoters have the sequence. So completely artificial and synthetic. And that is what is a promoter that can be controlled easily. Why? Because if we use any of these promoters, the cellular feedback in biology, we have biological system has negative and positive feedback. They will act on any of these promoters. Synthetic promoter, since it is not part of the genome of that organism, will not be subjected to that feedback. So that means the synthetic promoters are important. Now, how do we do that? This, these are some of the strategies. This is a normal wild type, a plant promoter. And we know there is a Tata box. We can cut out this Tata box. And what we need is 
for example, some DNA element to which some specific transcription factors bind. And these transcription factors are present only when there is stress. Right? So that means I can take this data, I can take this transcription factor binding element and I know which proteins will go and bind, I can join them together. Now you see that this architecture is not present in the plant cell. So now it is synthetic. It has part of it, but the rest is made artificially. And that means this promoter normally will not fire. It will only fire when there is stress because stress will give rise to this protein and this protein will go and sit in this uh, binding uh, elements which you have engineered and so this promoter is active uh, only when there is stress. You can make it either unidirectional or even as bidirectional. You can clone this Tata on the other side. So that means just by cutting pasting DNA you can generate promoters uh, as per your requirement. You can also have different modules. This is called modular promoters where one signaling pathway can come and act and so this promoter will fire only when there is a certain signaling happening or there is another signaling happening, right? And these are all dependent on the transcription factors which are activated upon signaling. So these kind of architectures normally don't exist in a cell, but one can engineer and make it synthetic. So one of the examples in yeast, which is there, for example, people have done it that there is a huge promoter, almost uh, 1 kb, which is called uh, gap dh promoter. And by doing uh, this synthetically, they have reduced it to only 150 nucleo uh, I mean, base pairs, right? So this huge promoter, whatever strong promoter, uh, so it is one of the strongest promoter in yeast, this synthetic promoter is as strong as this big promoter. But what is the advantage? That it is smaller in size. So that means you don't have to clone big, big sequences. It is also predictable and programmable because this promoter is not going to be subjected to feedback control systems in yeast because it is artificial. Now, how does this synthetic biology kind of systems were developed? So it actually started in 1960s and you all know the lack operon. Right? So we know when lactose is not there, then this lac operon is repressed by this lac I product, which is a lac repressor. And only when the lactose uh, comes inside the cell, then they have, since it has to be metabolized, these three proteins and genes are made. That means this was the first example which showed that in a cell, a regulatory circuit can exist and that can respond to the environment. That means it can sense. If there is a lactose, certain genes will be switched on. And if there is no lactose, certain genes can be switched off. So this was the first thing. That means we can control cell behavior just by what is there in the environment. So in yeast, same way, we have something called a UAS GAL4 system. So in a normally when galactose is absent, this UAS sequence binds to GAL4, but it is not accessible because GAL AT protein is bound. So no GAL genes are uh, transcribed or translated. As soon as you add galactose, the GAL3 is made, it will inactivate GAL8, so freeing GAL4 to bind to this US, and GAL genes are nicely now transcribed and translated. So what has been engineered or synthetically made is that we can, that means, make a promoter which is now uh, active only when there is heat shock. And then we clone this GAL4 transcription factor downstream of it. So we GAL4 is made and this GAL4 will go and bind to the UAS sequence and that UAS sequence can drive the transcription and translation of your favorite gene. It can be any gene that you clone. So that means normally this gene is off but synthetically you have made it such a way that only when you give a heat shock this gene is on and you made a small circuit that means this makes something that something will go and bind to the another gene and that gene will be transcribed and translated. So this is one example how we can regulate transcription synthetically. What are the tools and technologies that has helped synthetic biology? These are same tools and technologies that has helped RDT and genetic engineering, right? That means PCR, how to clone DNA, sticky end, restriction digestion, and so on. So these are the tools that are used for synthetic biology as well. Uh, of course, uh, with the advent of DNA sequencing, then it has become very easy nowadays to sequence not only one gene, but all the genes in an organism, right? And that is the next-gen technology. So this is just to show that Sanger sequencing was there initially, but as you see, then high-throughput sequencing started around 20, uh, 2004 or five. then it really increased the amount of sequencing data available. 
and what has happened is that as the amount of sequence thing increased the price of getting dna sequenced also dramatically reduced so it is cheaper nowadays to sequence an entire genome than you were i mean than what we were spending 10 years back to sequence one gene right so it has become much more convenient so these high throughput technologies now have are available for measuring rna dna protein everything right there are sophisticated instrument and this helps in the measuring the output of a synthetic cell so that means what we are talking of is to make a synthetic cell system where we can give inputs these are all inducers right nucleic acid metal ions anything we have to engineer a cell so that it can sense or any of these things that we want to use as an inducer and upon sensing there has to be a signaling pathway or some kind of mechanism that it will go and activate a heterogeneous or heterologous pathway and that pathway will now make a product and that product can be an output it can be secreted it can be helping in longevity of the cell and so on and that total put together we call it as a rational manipulation no more hit and trial that means what i want in the end accordingly i will engineer the cell it's not random it is rational so a few achievements i just wanted to uh, uh, share here and highlight so one is called bacterial photography that means uh, what people have done they have taken the bacteria and they have engineered in such a way it, it will make a pigment uh, how much it will make will depend on the wavelength of light so in the dark these bacteria will make high amount of black pigment in red light it will make low amount and in between it will make a different amount of the uh, gray to black right uh, uh, so sorry white to black that means if you show this you play this bacteria you put this einstein's picture on it and maybe then you can put different regions different light wavelengths then you will have a basically a film coming on the agar plate growing so the take home message is that you can engineer such things so that you can control the behavior of the e coli and make it do what you want it to do right so one of the other uh, examples of controlling cell behavior is that one can engineer something called cis repression that means this rna when it is made it has a, a five prime end which will fold back and block the ribosome binding site if it does that gfp is not made so this is the gfp coding region so it can self switch off now if you put another input a gene which is a trans activator and this rna now base pairs with this red part now the gene is on right so you can switch on and switch off a gene just by adding input 1 or input 2 or both of them together so this is how you can control the cell behavior you can tell the cell when how much and why you should make because you are controlling from the cell okay uh then you uh, might have already known these are logic gates right so in electronics engineering and all these are all and gate nand gate or gate and so on right so input versus output so uh, i'm not going through the detail but in biological sciences now it is possible in synthetic biology so what people have done they have done different clone different promoters having different kind of inducers if you add them then they will go and switch on something that something will go and switch on something else and finally if all of these inputs it sees then this final product is made so this is like a, a logic gate which is just like electronics and this is doable nowadays people do that and one of the example is this for example i want to kill uh, this uh, uh, multi drug resistant pseudomonas for example in hospital setting so i can engineer a cell and this has been shown in the lab but it is not in the field as of now i can engineer a cell which will sense something called coram molecules right coram sensing chemotaxis so this pseudomonas originasa releases some chemicals this bacteria engineered e coli can sense that switch on a gene and that gene will actually switch on a production of an antibiotic as well as it will uh, switch on a gene which will lyse this e coli that means this e coli engineered one when it sees pseudomonas it will make the antibiotic and it will kill itself so that this antibiotic is released from the cell and it kills the pseudomonas so this is a kind of a synthetic circuit so this circuit doesn't exist in e coli that you have put it to for therapeutic purpose or for uh, killing a given pathogen so the other synthetic biology approaches big area is metabolic engineering so uh, that means we can modify the metabolism of a cell 
just by turning on and turning off certain genes because genes means enzymes and we can control enzyme activity so this is a normal pathway in yeast what people have done they have taken they know which chemical is made after which enzymatic reaction this chemical they have now diverted to make say, artemisin artemisin you know is an anti malarial drug so earlier it was uh, extracted from the plant but now it is actually made in yeast so most of the artemisin drug in the world available now is made in yeast not from plant so how it was done this biosynthetic pathway in plant was known so those genes were cloned in yeast and now the yeast makes the artemisin right and this is what it has been done so this is the artemisin plant this is the yeast and these tablets and all that we buy now uh, they are actually made in yeast not in plants so not only uh, so yeast is now used as a cell factory that means it is the uh, the organism which produces a lot of different things depending on what you want so like opioids resveratrol and carotenes etc so you can that means engineer the metabolism of a cell to make a product that you want to make commercially right and this is good for human health now what are the other achievements i'll just give some highlights what synthetic biology has done and it is in the commercial stage now so we know burgers right so meat production is a big uh, environment unfriendly way of doing things so what a company called impossible foods in us has done it makes veggie burgers so these are from soya bean but now these burgers people were not eating because the people who eat meat they want kind of a you know red meat right i mean bleeding burger so to say so they made something called bleeding bur these burgers where they took the gene from the soya roots and it's called leg hum hemoglobin and when they clone this gene and put it in the yeast that yeast now makes this red color substance and it gives a flavor and a meaty aroma and the people then like the burger more they just uh, you know uh, i mean it looks and tastes almost like an animal source but it is exactly made in a lab or in a factory by yeast completely vegan so there is nothing no animal products here so that helps that means you don't need to rear Uh, the animal or you know feed all of those so uh, this company claims that to make this burger it uses almost 90% less greenhouse gases which will be either uh, i mean otherwise used the other example for this is this uh, membrane called hyaline so this is a polymer and this monomers are made in yeast and then this monomers are put together and it makes this transparent membrane it has a is highly thermostable and has very enhanced mechanical properties this is now used for foldable phones and wearable uh, jackets and so on which are kind of uh, smart jackets right so this membrane is now made biologically and used for uh, a variety of purposes the other thing uh, is for example uh, soya bean oil right so soya bean oil has high linoleic acid and in this uh, this chemical actually reduces the shelf life of the oil and it also breaks down the oil faster when we put in a fryer so what people have done they have modified this plant such a way that it makes more oleic acid not linoleic acid so now oleic acid is more stable and it keeps the oil for a longer time so this is also good for humans and finally i have I talked in the uh, this crispr lecture something about car t cell therapy so that means we take the blood from the patient isolate the t cells engineer it with a gene that we want and this normally those t cells won't express that gene why so i just asking is any drawback or side effect of this food jo vegan burger bataya aapne no uh, uh, as of now there is no side effect because it's completely vegetable source it's soya bean nothing else yes right there no animal product so as of now there is no side effect reported and it's unlikely to have a side effect okay Fine. So this is for T cell therapy, and this is again a, a kind of a success story of a uh, synthetic cells. You already probably know, but there are a few of the uh, papers I want to highlight, which came out like few months back. Now, uh, what people have done, they have engineered bacteria to de to detect tumor. So tumor, when it is uh, there, you know, the tumor releases DNA, nucleic acids in the blood. now these bacteria can sense those dna and will glow green then we'll know that where in the blood and which organ has a tumor so this is also has been tried in mouse not in humans as now uh, there is another engineered bacteria that has been made and again these are all synthetic biology principles which can use as a melanoma vaccine and 
what is this we normally have bacteria which are uh, present in the skin right all of us have that so they have taken this bacteria to express tumor antigen and now when they put it in our skin only our skin won't uh, you know realize that it is its own bacteria but now this bacteria makes tumor antigens and our immune system sees it and makes antibodies so this has helped in curing many melanoma patients i mean not, not patients i will say currently it's in animal model but melanoma the tumor size regresses because you have put back a normal uh, microbiome of the skin right the other example which is kind of very interesting uh, which we find is that uh, one can actually uh, de uh, destroy cancer like colon cancer right colorectal cancer rather so colorectal cancer when it becomes cancerous it, uh, it it kind of makes some cell adhesion molecules on its surface so these bacteria are engineered so that when they are given to the mice they will go and bind only to the tumor cells because their uh, uh, glycoprotein profile has changed upon binding it will switch on a gene which will basically deliver the anti tumor drug and once the tumor regresses then this bacteria will be basically passed out in the stool because now they cannot attach anymore they will not attach to the normal cell so there is a nice therapy that is coming out uh, as i know it is in the clinical trials but it has been shown in mice so these are uh, kind of success stories of uh, the synthetic organisms the other big thing that is going on is to uh, assemble the genome or kind of minimum genome of an organism so this is a classical paper which was in 2000 Uh, i think 5 or 7 where uh, mycoplasma genome was reduced to almost 400 odd genes and this tells that you need just 400 odd genes for mycoplasma to survive now why to minimize genome because uh, or how to minimize genome one can actually take this dna fragments you engineer in a computer synthesize them join them together put it in a plasmid and then go on replacing the normal genome with a synthetic sequences and that's how you make a designer yeast or a designer uh, organisms and this has already been done this is no more a science fiction now this year i mean 2006 the bacterial genome was minimized and recently like last month a yeast synthetic uh, so there is a synthetic yeast genome project and that reported almost 50% of the yeast dna was synthetic that means designed on computer yeast normally doesn't have those dna sequences and that yeast is doing fine and that yeast actually will be now used to put 50% more genomic uh, a foreign dna to make a metabolite or a product that you want right so there is a nice review where this uh, approach can also be done for viruses and other cell types which is kind of a uh, good and bad and we all know the ethics of it so what is the next frontier in terms of synthetic biology area so what we saw and that is what is the future going to be to engineer cells or even organisms the idea will be can we put some input where this eukaryotic or prokaryotic cells once engineered can give an output which is a desired thing it can be bioplastics because now you know there is plastic pollution so there is lot of research going on in uh, not only degrading those plastics using uh, bacteria but also engineering cells so that they make plastic like biomaterial in the earlier uh, crispr story also i have mentioned there is another biomaterial called uh, the spider silk which is made by the silkworm so those kind of materials are engineered and they are based on genetic uh, information they are not chemically made and these cells can used as a biofactory so what we need to do all of that you can see there is a interdisciplinary area synthetic biology is basically an, inter an interdisciplinary area it needs organelle engineering systems biology you might have heard all of those terms is mostly computational data driven metabolic engineering i mentioned where you change the metabolism as long as you know which enzyme does what and produces what metabolite you also have structural biology we need to know which enzyme to engineer where to engineer which amino acid to change and so on so synthetic biology comes in kind of a, uh, at the intersection of different fields and this is not only just doing a wet lab which is building genes and so on but also computer science and synthetic uh, and systems biology so a good synthetic biology work will involve different domains of biology and not only biology but computer science 
now why should we bother so much one of the things as i said is an emerging area there is a lot of potential we hear a term nowadays a lot maybe which is called bioeconomy that means we are shifting from a petrol with this uh, petroleum based economy or coal based economy to biology based economy that means we have to use biological organism cells to produce industrial grade uh, you know uh, or commercial grade uh, chemicals products and so on which currently we use chemistry to do that now there is a huge market for it uh, in 2020 this market this global market was around 40 billion a lot of startups have come up in india and across the world there are different areas of synthetic biology which includes organism engineering healthcare food and drink and i'll give you some examples a lot of chemical these companies have come up which are completely synthetic biology companies now what are the main technologies that are enabling this or pushing this of course dna synthesis bioinformatics you need to have knowledge of sequencing technologies and other biophysical parameters and of course you can see that from 2011 when this was very very less in 9 or 10 years within a decade there are different areas of synthetic biology that has contributed to the growth in this particular area and it increases in the financial Uh, sector as well that means the economy grows if the synthetic biology grows in india what do we see so in india this is the last report uh, which was given last year by byrac which is a government agency so they basically showed that in the bioeconomy in india there was a growth in just one year 14% growth different areas were impacted by again bioeconomy this is not chemistry this is biology based solutions biology based systems so biopharma covid economy was a big one because of covid things vaccines etc they can be made agriculture now there is a huge impetus of can we use biological organism for our uh, rather than using pesticides etc can we improve crops by doing soil microbiome engineering and so on can we make industrial grade chemicals metabolites and so on right so a lot of money was put in india almost then, uh, there is one question from jug saran singh birdi sir are there any novel broad spectrum antibiotics in the offing by synthetic biology so broad spectrum in the sense that uh, currently the, uh, this is about identifying which antibiotic is going to act against many different uh, so called amr strains right so synthetic biology what it will do is to produce it in a suitable host so i know there are a couple of antibiotics so what synthetic biology is doing in the, in that area as i know there is something called biosynthetic gene clusters or even polyketide pathway and all so those have been cloned into e coli and yeast and they are making those antibiotics and chemicals although it is not yet in the industrial skill that means it is not commercially feasible yet but one has to improve so that means we are in the learning stage and we have to again design build test and learn right so right now i don't think there is anything in the market but there is now different genes being cloned and tested in the lab that i am aware of yeah i was wondering you see because these antibiotics uh, they, they, they are they are synthesized by clusters of genes correct so it will be it will be very difficult to make them synthetically so that's what i was wondering so now because of the uh, improvement in in you know cloning and engineering technologies uh, you know for example opioid i think there are 14 gene needed to be cloned to make an opioid and they have done it in east so now because of this genome reduction and improvement in technologies uh, we just need to know i mean of course the larger the uh, you know uh, the genome size that is put into an organism Uh, there will be some fitness cost but uh, putting like 10 15 genes in a uh, organism is not a big deal anymore so yes, yeah that is beauty of synthetic biology more than one gene can be cloned yes yes expressed absolutely absolutely the entire genome has been added like in mycoplasma correct so correct if Ten or twenty genes are responsible for production of any metabolites. That can be possible. Yes. But maybe yes. maybe their level of expression may be different. Their yes. maybe their controlling system may be different. But it is possible. Yes, it is possible. So in the lab, what uh, like you know what we and others can do in academia is that we do something called proof of concept study. That means we show that an yeast can make a given antibiotic or a metabolite. 
then it is given to the industry partner who will now further modify downstream processing that is fermentation bioreactor all conditions and then they will feed back to us and say we are not increasing the titer then we will look okay can we change the promoter can we you know do a, some other engineering in the host to increase the production to make it commercially feasible so that is how it works several permutation combinations required correct 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 that is true Yes, sir. So, just to continue, I mean, I have just a few more slides left. Uh, so, I'm just trying to highlight that in India, there is a huge future for bioeconomy and synthetic biology. There are a lot of government grants now available for startups and even for synthetic biology calls. Uh, DBT and BIRAC plays an important role in that. And they're putting a lot of money. So, from 360 million to almost a billion uh, was put by the R&D of the biotech industry, right? So, this is the private funding. There was a lot of foreign direct investment in India during that time. And of course, uh, India aims to have almost 300 billion uh, bioeconomy in the next few years. So synthetic biology will play an important role to realize that goal. And of course, the, there is a lot of government and private support here. Now, what are the areas that are upcoming? Right, Just a couple of slides. So one is for clinical application. That means, as we, uh, let's say a person is diseased because a certain uh, gene product is not made or certain metabolite is missing and so on. So we can make a synthetic circuit out of it by using those logic gates. So that means if this person eats that chemical, then only this gene will be switched on this circuit. And this can be put in a uh, cell of the same organ, uh, of the same person and put it back. So that will restore the biological pathway and that will uh, also bring that person from a disease state to a healthy state. And this, uh, I discussed with CRISPR, it has been done, but a lot of research is going on in treating monogenic disorders, not like complicated disorders, but mostly monogenic. And they include metabolic disorders, blood disorders like hemophilia, sickle cell anemia and so on. So the other kind of interesting things, and there is some, I know some startups in India and in US, they are doing it, that they are making so-called vegan cheese, right? So no animal product. That means what you can do is to take the milk protein DNA, clone it, put it in yeast and make a lot of milk protein and other things. And then you can grow in a bioreactor, get a vegan milk, and from that vegan milk, you can make cheese. So no animal involved, completely yeast, completely artificial, but made by an organism, a biological organism like yeast. And this is kind of going to be the future that uh, all meat and veg and all, and there is a lot of craze in the West, not in India as of now, where they are going so-called environment friendly way and uh, increasing the biological products. This is another uh, potential use in the future for biosensing. That means we have a lot of, uh, you know, kind of water pollution or even water contaminated with different microorganisms like chorella. Uh, this cholera. So can we make a yeast biosensor which can detect, let's say, cholera toxin and we'll give a color or we'll change something in the water and then we'll know, okay, if there is no cholera, then no color, it's safe to drink. And if it changes color, then we know we better chlorinate, boil or do something, right? So this is going to be another application of synthetic yeasts in the future. So uh, putting it all together, the only biology cannot do, I was emphasizing computational biology, uh, I mean, this computer science people also have to come in. And this is why, because it's a huge amount of data currently available in the public domain from whole genome sequencing, metabolomics, proteomics, you name it, transcriptomics, you name it, right? So this metabolic pathway, there is a circuit diagram almost people are trying to make and it is no, a, quite of it, I mean, quite a lot has been made, especially in East, it is well done. Question is that, well, how do I basically perturb this so that I don't kill the yeast, but I still make the chemical or the product of my choice. And that is where the modeling comes, the system biology comes, that what all information is there, if we change one gene, what happens to the entire transcriptome? What happens to the metabolome? And is it going to affect the yeast cell or not? So uh, it will, in future, it will involve bioengineering, and there are many uh, uh, ways to look at that. Uh, there can be, there will be a rise of cells uh, which are called synthetic cells, which will have desired functions uh, as we want. Uh, unnatural molecular biology is something like normally we do restriction digestion, etc. But nowadays there are a lot of molecular biology tools which are high throughput. Uh, and uh, you can clone 20 genes, 30 DNA fragments, you can synthesize DNA, genes, etc. No more 
uh, you know, kind of doing this typical molecular biology. So those are unnatural. Uh, of course, there will be computational support needed for mathematical modeling. So a lot of math, maybe physics people will come into this field. And one has to also do this genomics work. That means reduce the genome so that we can put extra DNA into those organisms without killing the host. And this will all help. These are all interconnected. And this will all help in making better and better organism to produce a better and a higher and higher yield of the product that we want. So what are the applications? I already said this just to highlight that biofuels, biomedicine. So everything is bio nowadays going to be biomaterial, biosensor, bioremedies. And of course, in food, right? So these are the different uh, uh, applications. There will be a lot of novel chemicals. So many chemicals are enantiomers, and maybe one isoform is, you know, uh, having a better uh, commercial value, not the other one. And enzymes will typically catalyze one reaction in one enantiomer. So that will also help in making the desired product, which chemical synthesis cannot do because it will make a mixture of products. So these kind of things, uh, some research is going on in making uh, specific products based on enzymes, which are biological systems. Now, what are the challenges for synthetic biology? So one of the challenges is biggest, I will say, is public perception, right? So that means we have to convince the public that you know this is not GM or, or whatever, genetic engineering. Of course, these are all involved as a tool to do this, but that the benefits will out, uh, out outweigh the risk and it will be for public good. That means we have to also devise policies and plans so that it is done safely in the lab. Ethical rules are followed so that nothing unethical is done. Uh, it should be acceptable to the public. And the other thing is, of course, the cost. Currently, since the technologies are developing, a cost of producing a synthetic cell to produce something useful is still pretty high. So as more and more technologies come, as more and more people come and make those happen, the cost will definitely go down. As I showed an example, that the genome sequencing cost has dramatically come down in the last 10, 20 years. And of course, efficiency. But the problem with biology is that, uh, or the issue with biology as compared to engineering, an engineer, for example, I always say, let's say civil engineer, uh, they will make a bridge and that bridge will not change for maybe hundreds of years. But if we make a cell, a synthetic, there is evolution. The cell will evolve, right? It will maybe take some mutation randomly and that will, you know, select some cells which will maybe change itself over time. So there is a huge challenge in terms of a biological system which is much more complex than, in my view, even the engineering principles or the math and physics because they have set rules. We don't have very set rules. We cannot predict how a cell will behave after we have engineered. And that's one of the concerns of safety and public acceptance. So these are the challenges, uh, but I'm pretty sure um, as more and more people join in, they can convince. For the students who are there in the audience, I just wanted to highlight, you might have heard or not, there is something called IGM competition. So it is an international genetic, uh, uh, this uh, machine competition held in different countries. So from India, I'm seeing for the last few years, usually IITs and other, uh, you know, so the ICERs and all, they send teams, but more and more uh, the other institutions are also coming up. So I'll encourage all of you to participate in that. You can go to IGM website. You just have to use synthetic biology principle to solve a problem. It's as simple as that. And that problem you can see around you. For example, uh, there was a team, uh, you know, which was trying to, uh, by, by engineering and a bacteria, to degrade that, uh, you know, the pan, right? I mean, in India, we have pan and we spit it, and that creates the red stain. Can we find a bacteria that can degrade that red stain and, you know, be used as a spray? And this is a synthetic biology uh, solution to a problem. So do think of these problems and solutions. And uh, uh, I am part of the Indian League of IGEN. Uh, so there are many people who will like to uh, excite the younger generation to adopt synthetic biology principle for solving our national problems, uh, which are unique to us. So with that, I, I would like to thank you, all of you for attending, listening, and I'm happy to uh, take questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our camera on. And uh, now anyone can ask question. And as you know, Sanjay sir, Dr. Sarad Dalai from Nirma University is here, as I can see. 
and uh, Jugsaran Singh Bedi sir from Delhi University. Okay. So this is also it's good. Uh, two, four, five dog teachers and these big teachers are they are attending since the starting. Okay. Students have joined and left. Okay. Yes. So if any question from any participants, any teacher, कुछ questions हैं तो पूछिए. You can ask in Hindi also. Hello. मेरी आवाज आ रही है? हाँ, बिल्कुल. Okay. If there is no question, then you can share your feedback. What do you think about Professor Sarad Dalai? Hello. Okay, there is one question. Can we use this technology in agriculture? Yes. Yes, uh, we can use. So again, synthetic biology includes genetic engineering and those as a tool. So it can be used and it should be used, right? Because our country is mostly agricultural based country, right? I mean, our society is mostly based on that. So for example, you know, I mean, pest control, I'm giving you one small example. So for many lepidopter on insects are pests for crops. So there are, I know a, a, a startup which is trying to engineer yeast to make the pheromones for those lepidopter on insects. And then you can trap them without using any chemical, any kind of things. You can use them to trap mosquitoes or even the other kind of pests. So there comes a synthetic value. So you have to know how that pheromone is made in the organism and then uh, once you know that, you can clone, assemble, make a pathway and put it in yeast which you can easily grow, right? So that kind of thing can be useful for agriculture. Next question, uh, Dikra, aapko. Yeah, Sanjay, Sanjay, I have one query. Sure. Uh, uh, see, uh, there are, see all these uh, T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and all these uh, uh, cells of the immune system, they have got variety of... Uh, receptors and each of these receptors they work with some kind of an agonist which comes there and see are there any of these receptors or their agonists uh, uh, for immunological therapies are they being made synthetically or any knowledge about, about that yeah so uh, you know sir uh, the only thing i can share is that currently in the clinic going to be is so-called CAR T cell therapy which yes, is a part of immune cell are they, are they synthetic? Are they really synthetic? Yes, because the, the, those receptors yeah. for CAR T cells are not yeah. natural, right? Okay. They are synthetic receptors for T cell receptor. They have kept the cytoplasmic domain same, but the uh, binding domain of the antigen is completely uh, synthetic. Is yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so those kind of uh, cells are now made, uh, and in India, I think. Uh, uh, there is a license given to immunotherapy, but yes, uh, in the world, the, the CAR T cell therapy is a hot topic. Yeah, that that, uh, that was what is my my mind. I did not mention the CAR T, but uh, probably you picked that up. Uh, so 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 it is a kind of a semi synthetic type, isn't it? Yes. yes. Partly made, partly natural, isn't it? Yes. So uh, it is basically engineering of the natural uh, receptor to make it uh, recognize an antigen of our choice. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if we know a tumor antigen, then we uh, we have to kind of develop so-called this single fragment, uh, this variable antibody, yes. single yeah, chain. Yeah. And yeah. those are basically cloned with a T, T cell receptors intracellular domain. Yeah. And then they are now uh, transformed using CRISPR and others in the T cell, and the T cell is now um, you know modified and put back into the patient. And then this CAR T cell is being touted as one of the revolutionary uh, immunological therapies uh, in the future. Correct. So uh, that was basically in my mind whether it is uh, synthetic or not. Thank you very much. It was an excellent uh, talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Kaveri has one question. Is there any basic course through online mode? So I request Sanjay, sir, to again conduct one long course on synthetic biology. So keep in touch, Kaveri. Yes, yes. So we are trying to connect the people who are expert. So many students, they are willing to learn, but uh, teachers are scattered. Eh, na? There is sure. no good platform. So I'm trying to connect those all expert people who are willing to disseminate knowledge. So I'm really thankful to Sanjay Ghosh, sir. We have circulated one form, Google form, who are willing to teach, in which 
he, he has himself showed interest and consecutively he has delivered two lectures on two advanced topics. Previously, he has delivered on CRISPR CAS system and today synthetic biology. So really, society will also remember your contribution and I am also, uh, because my purpose is to disseminate knowledge. We have huge population, but still we are dependent on the country who has 6 crore population, 7 crore population, because most of the people are only certificate seekers, certificate right. takers. They right. are not uh, able to uh, mislearn or you can say, uh, knowledge ke liye wo bahut kam log usme jo hai na, contribution ke liye. Sir, aapka, aapka feedback, sir, uh, uh, BD, sir, hey, what is your feedback? Excellent. The, uh, and, and I have been looking at uh, the uh, uh, lectures which you have organized previously and another one which Sanjay had delivered about uh, CRISPRs. I mean, uh, uh, Gopal, I say, I, I must say you are doing an excellent job. You are an excellent. Sir, uh, I precision medicine par mein bhi karwaya hai, uh, kem, uh, Oxford ke usse. I have, seen, uh, I have seen those all posters. Yes. I could not attend many of them, but yes. uh, uh, this was the uh, this was the I mean synthetic biology. This is something I had some of these queries in my mind. So uh, that is why I called you up immediately when I saw that the, the link is not there. Yes, and uh, some. Uh, so. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so so. Thank keep you, it, sir. Keep, keep this up. Keep this up. This is excellent work you are doing. Excellent work. Thank you. Any thank question you. from any participants? Any attendees? Sir, I have. Yes, yes. Please ask. Vikram ji, puchye. Yes, sir. Sir, जैसे एक अलगी अलगी से हम लोग बायोफिल बना सकते हैं, ठीक है? तो सर सर क्या होता है कि प्रॉब्लम ये होता है कि उसका लिपिड कंटेंट बहुत कम मिलता है हमको. Correct. कि ये प्रॉब्लम आता है तो सर क्या हम लोग उसमें ऐसा करके कर सकते हैं कुछ कि उसका लिपिड कंटेंट हम लोग को ज्यादा अचीव कर सके तो इससे इससे ये प्रॉब्लम मतलब सॉल्व हो सकता है कि जो लिपिड कंटेंट हम लोग को कम मिलता है वो कि हमें उसके मुकाबले ज्यादा मिलेगा जो नेचुरली मिलता है नहीं तो सही बात है तो उसके लिए कौन सा एलगी का स्ट्रेन चॉइस बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट रहेगा जहां पे लिपिड कम यस सर है ना तो एक वो आई मीन वो एक एरिया है जहां पे सॉल्व कर सकते हैं दूसरा ये है कि लिपिड कंटेंट बढ़ाने के लिए अगर एंडोजेनसली बढ़ाना है अगर उसी एलगी में तो ये मालूम करना पड़ेगा कि कौन सा जीन उसके लिए रेस्पॉन्सिबल है या कुछ नॉन एलगी सोर्स से भी वो जीन लाके वी कैन इंजीनियर वो एलगी को सो दैट इट मेक्स ए मोर लिपिड और इससे आपका ये बायोफ्यूल ज्यादा बनेगा राइट यूल्ड विल बी मोर ये ओवर एक्सप्रेशन उस जीन का करवा देंगे बिक्रम जी जो जीन लिपिड सिंथेसिस कर रहा है ना अच्छा अगर ऑलरेडी उसमें कम बन रहा है और अगर नहीं बन रहा है तो वो सिंथेटिक जीन या दूसरे ऑर्गेनिज्म वाला जीन डाल देंगे है ना ये सब मतलब पहले कोई एलगी को जो हम लोग कर रहे काम उस पर उसका पहले जीन का एनालिसिस करना पड़ेगा कौन सा जीन हमको वो ये लिपिड का ज्यादा मतलब लिपिड का सोर्स बना रहा है और उसके बाद फिर उसको इंजीनियर करना पड़ेगा हाँ तो वो जो आ, जो आप बताए उसके लिए आजकल जीनोमिक्स का बहुत चलन है है ना तो पूरा अगर जीनोम मालूम है तो देन बड़े आ, आसानी से मालूम चल सकता है कि कौन कौन सा जीन है और कौन कौन सा लिपिड आ, का जो सिंथेसिस पाथवे में इन्वॉल्व है है ना तो बायो इन्फॉर्मेटिकली वो मालूम कर सकते हैं और अगर वो जीन है देन उसको आप रेगुलेट करना बस बाकी रह जाएगा एक्सपेरिमेंटली ओके सर थैंक यू सर कोर्स किया होगा तो उसमें हमने लिमिटेशंस बताया था रिकम्बिनेंट डीएनए टेक्नोलॉजी का कि कोई भी फिनोटाइप नहीं ला सकते अगर उसका करस्पॉन्डिंग जीन पता नहीं है सो फर्स्ट थिंग इज यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड नो द जीन रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दैट कैरेक्टर है ना नाउ मेरा क्वेश्चन लास्ट क्वेश्चन है संजय सर ये जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग से कैसे सिंथेटिक बायोलॉजी अलग है सो जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग इज पार्ट ऑफ सिंथेटिक बायोलॉजी जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग एक टूल है और वो टूल को लेके वो जो भी पाथवे वगैरह इंजीनियर कर सकते हैं अब जेनेटिकली इंजीनियर जो ऑर्गेनिज्म जो जो बनेगा जो हम लोग कहते हैं आजकल जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग इंजीनियर्ड ऑर्गेनिज्म या जीएम है ना जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड वगैरह दैट इज आल्सो ए सिंथेटिक ऑर्गेनिज्म इन दैट डेफिनेशन एज लॉन्ग एज इट इज प्रोड्यूसिंग समथिंग जो ह्यूमन के लिए वैल्यू रखता है है ना 
तो ये सिंथेटिक बायोलॉजी इंक्लूड जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग इंक्लूड्स आरडीएनए टेक्नोलॉजी इंक्लूड्स पीसीआर क्लोनिंग एवरीथिंग क्योंकि वही टूल यूज करके ही आप सिंथेटिक बायोलॉजी कर सकते हैं ओके सो थैंक यू इफ देयर इज नो मोर क्वेश्चन एनीवन कैन अनम्यूट एंड शेयर योर फीडबैक ओरल फीडबैक और इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन स्टिल यू हैव क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क ओके सो आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन आवाज नहीं आ रही कृषि जोर से बोलिए हेलो हाँ हाँ बोलिए हेलो सर यस सर आई टू आस्क अबाउट इमर्जिंग टॉपिक लाइक पर्सनलाइज्ड मेडिसिन्स पर्सनलाइज्ड थेरेपिटिक्स आर देर एनी कोरिलेशन बिटवीन सिंथेटिक पार्ट एंड पर्सनलाइज्ड थेरेपिटिक्स हाँ सो इट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन सो पर्सनलाइज्ड मेडिसिन पर्सनलाइज्ड � is an uh, area uske liye you need to have genomic you know knowledge and so on right personalized matlab that what that mutation or whatever is there in the person synthetic biology again can help and uh, jaise maine dikhaya ki there are uh, you know in clinic how it can be useful if we know that that person you know will be responsive to a given drug then can we make a, a genetic circuit that will only express under given condition in that person right so kuch person are tolerant to some drugs some are not tolerant to certain drugs based on the metabolism of the person so synthetic biology can help make the foundation on which a personalized therapy can be done right but for that uh, you have to know the genome sequence uh, or the genomics has to be very clear yes so one question in chat box i am able to see ikbal is we know cognitive science is also interdisciplinary course and is offered by few institute are there any institute who offer msc or iphd uh, iphd what is iphd in synthetic bio if you can unmute and ask question that will be good equal skg iphd means integrated phd you are asking yes sir iphd means integrated phd okay so sanjay sir so, uh india mein as i know there is no uh, course like what you are saying uh, in uh, the institution i am in we are planning to start a masters in synthetic biology and bioengineering in the future but as you can imagine uh, it will have different uh, course structure than normal biotechnology it will have computational biology and you know uh, systems biology wagera wagera so it will be theory come very hands on but uske liye we are planning now maybe in another year or so we will have it in place abroad there are uh, courses in synthetic biology uh, phd in synthetic biology is not you know i mean it's very difficult to uh, define for example if you work in my lab then my lab works on synthetic biology so it will be phd in science but you will be doing synthetic biology right so uh, but masters course जहां तक मुझे मालूम है इन इंडिया में अभी तक कोई ऑफर नहीं करता है बहुत वो स्पेसिफिक मास्टर कोर्स होना भी नहीं चाहिए बहुत लुक्रेटिव लगेगा लेकिन वो उतना नहीं हो पाएगा और बच्चे भी कोप अप नहीं कर पाएंगे पहले तो जीन के बारे में जाने फिर सिंथेटिक बायोलॉजी फिर ले तो मेटाबॉलिज्म जाने करेक्ट वो इट मे बी अट्रैक्टिव बट यू मस्ट हैव कंप्लीट बैकग्राउंड देन आप उसको फिर वहां पर में कर पाएंगे एकदम सही एकदम सही सो आप पीएचडी करो सिंथेटिक बायोलॉजी में वैसे गाइड जहां पर हो रहा है करेक्ट करेक्ट यू कैन वर्क ऑन दैट बहुत जगह पीएचडी का ये नहीं नाम नहीं होता कि आप बायोटेक में पीएचडी है या क्या है सिर्फ आपका टॉपिक होगा इंडिया में बहुत जगह होता है कि सिर्फ आप बायोटेक कर रहे हो या माइक्रो जैसे हमारा पीएचडी था था तो डिपार्टमेंट मॉलिकुलर मेडिसिन लेकिन उसमें कहीं नहीं लिखा है कि हमको पीएचडी किस में मिला सिर्फ हमारा टॉपिक लिखा हुआ है ना सो यू शुड वर्क During PhD on synthetic biology, that will be uh, advisable. Correct. Ekdam sahi. Any risk related to synthetic biology? ES Nova, can you introduce ES Nova? ES Nova, can you unmute and speak? ES Nova, are you listening? So any risk synthetic biology? Me, jo genetic engineering GMO ka risk mana jata hai, wahi isme hoga risk. करेक्ट सो so, अभी इंडिया uh, में डीबीटी ने एक सिंथेटिक uh, बायोलॉजी की पॉलिसी नहीं है एज सच जीएमओ की जैसे पॉलिसी अभी बनी uh, है बस दैट विल बी अप्लाइड इट्स नॉट यार डिफरेंट जेने जीएमओ जैसे है तो इसमें मल्टीपल जीन होंगे पूरा मेटाबॉलिक 
पाथवे चेंज किया जाएगा ज्यादा चीन होंगे इसमें करेक्ट करेक्ट सो थैंक यू अगेन इफ देर इज नो मोर क्वेश्चन विवेक पटेल ओके सो यू कैन ऑल्सो ज्वाइन लिंक इन एंड यू कैन राइट योर फीडबैक ऑन लिंक इन एज वेल एज हेयर सो दैट ऑदर पीपुल फ्रॉम योर फ्रेटर्निटी विल ज्वाइन इन सेकेंड लेक्चर एंड दे विल गेट ऑल्सो बेनिफिट सो ट्राई टू डिसमिनेट नॉलेज नॉलेज एटलीस्ट यू शुड सर्कुलेट दिस थिंग्स डोंट हाइड डोंट उसको मास्क करके नहीं रख दो आपको पता है तो दूसरे को भी बताओ अपने फ्रेंड को भी बताओ दे इज नो कॉम्पिटिशन ग्लोबल कॉम्पिटिशन है आजकल ज्यादातर स्टूडेंट क्या होते हैं एमएससी में उनको जो जानकारी मिलती है उस फ्लायर को छुपा के पूरा कोशिश करते हैं बैचमेंट को ना बताए दिस दिस हैबिट यू शुड एवॉइड है ना बिल्कुल बिल्कुल That's why I request some time to write on Facebook or LinkedIn ताकि आपके friend देखें तो वो भी join करें ताकि जो 40 लोग देख रहे हैं अगर 100 लोग आएंगे तो 100 लोग तक so rate of dissemination of knowledge will increase and it will percolate to more and more people. No. कोई question है जय प्रकाश जी आप join किया अभी कुछ questions है synthetic biology का otherwise we are winding up डेढ़ घंटा होने वाला है. Any faculty? We are not able to hear you. Someone wants to join. Still, people are willing to join. So now, yes, Jay Prakash. Any question from Synthetic Biology? Yes, yes sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, myself, Jay Prakash. I just now joined. I missed your class. Uh, one thing I want to uh, roll out because this Synthetic Biology uh, in, in future we can use for this positive control uh, preparation, sir. Because now we are using so many highly pathogenic virus and other thing. For that we can use this synthetic biology as a use of primary uh, positive control to avoid the biosecurity issues, sir. That's what one uh, suggestion, sir. No, no, correct. So that can be used and that is being used. Uh, I mean, in lab, right? So yes. synthetic genomes can be made. Uh, there was a report a few years back of a pox virus or something that they made the genome synthetically, which is much more virulent, right? So uh, that's a bad example, but there can be good examples also. But it is possible by synthetic virus. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody. Keep in touch. Join on LinkedIn, Telegram, Facebook, and keep in touch with us. You should also write your feedback in Google form shared here uh, in in this chat. Uh, so thank you again sanjay sir thank you sir aapka invitation and then yeah we will definitely do more such things yes Good yes point. yes so aap dekh rahe ki bahut sare faculty jo jo aged bhi ho gaye hain they are also joining they are trying to learn that is also achievement our achievement correct correct now we'll do that for sure and it's a fantastic uh, initiative from your side so yes, we'll you, definitely sir. do as much as we can to help Thank you. Thank you everybody. Good night. Thank you sir. Good night. Thank you.